Welcome to today's e-seminar Curate Electromagnetic Simulation with CST Studio Suite 2019. Next slide, please. Today's presenter, Hilary Haninen. Hilary Haninen is an electromagnetic senior portfolio manager for CST, part of the Simulia brand of Dassault System. Hilary holds a Doctor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering from Alto University in Nelinski. His focus is on frequency domain installation methods for electromagnetic simulations and his interests also include large-scale electromagnetic simulation and high-performance computing. And Nairi, you can take over to start your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. And as you just heard, my name is Ilari Haninen and I will next 30 to 40, 40 minutes or so show you the highlights of the CST Studio Suite 2019 release and this year we will do something a little bit different compared to our previous webinars to introduce our new features. We are going to talk about how product design and how new feature development are related. To do that, to do that I will use industry processes as context to frame the highlighted new features and the main new improvements of CST Studio Suite 2019 release. First one of these is integrated anti-engineering and certification for high-tech applications. Then we'll go to the automotive and transport sector with connected vehicle communication performance and others AV sensors performance and final to aerospace and defense with air crash communication and detection system performance. Well, what are industry processes though you might be and are probably asking? Um, if you are a CSD Studio user, and since you're listening to this webinar, you might might be. Something like antenna design for your, you might be responsible for something like antenna design for your company's new flagship product, for example, a smart internet connected music player, as shown here. You're interested in new features about meshing, or for example, how to share your antenna design with the contractor supplier in a secure way, and, and so on. But you're designing the antenna in isolation. It has to fit in the product, it has to function in the product, and the product also has many other components that have that uh, function um, uh, inside the product and also with each other. Being able to simulate an antenna is no longer sufficient. You have to be able to think through the whole process, think of all possible workflow, flow, workflows and what is needed to be able to fill in the gaps that are missing. And even if you're not personally responsible for all those things, you are cooperating and communicating with colleagues who are. With the industry processes, we are trying to answer all possible questions that might arise during the product design and development, to fill in the gaps, so to speak. That might mean development of some new, big new features, but also some smaller ones that are specifically needed for some particular process to really make it complete. And thinking and planning uh, future development in terms of these complex processes um, allows us to really recognize gaps that previously were missing and fill in what is, is required. You as customers are not trying to just simulate a small piece of a product. You are trying to make a complete product and we want to address your needs with the industry processes. What is an industry process then? Well, in a nutshell, you could describe it as the whole process to develop, validate and even fabricate certain parts of a product or even the whole product. It is a collection of workflows, for example, antenna or antenna array design, antenna placement and so on, all of which are required to complete the part um, or the, even the complete product. So let's now focus deeper on the actual new features in the context of the integrated engineer, antenna engineering and certification industry process. The industry processes, the processes that I selected to highlight today all deal in some way with communication. And communication means antennas. So these industry processes more or less try to answer the following three questions. What shape and size uh, should the antenna be? Where can I place the antenna? Does the antenna still work when placed in the system or the device in a realistic environment? And where, where it should be integrated and used? The integrated antenna engineering and certification includes different workflows in it. For example, integrated antenna design, interference or RFD sense simulation and sub optimization and certification. 
there are also some other related industry processes that try to answer different questions from the product design perspective, like device EMC, EMI performance, and, certifi and certifi uh, performance certification and pre circuit post analysis. But let's start with tandem design workflow and what new features we have in the 2018 uh, release that are relevant to it. First step in our scenario is, of course, to start with an antenna concept. So let's imagine that you're in charge of finding a um, um, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna for a smart music player. So for compact devices like mobile phones, usually you need a very highly customized solution. Uh, but for any slightly more spacious device which needs connectivity, such as this music player, Antenna, Antenna Magus is a rich source of candidate Antenna designs which may well work more or less out of the box. So Antenna Magus is a perfect tool for providing design candidates for antennas. You can select, for example, VLAN 2.4 GHz in the specification chooser and Antenna Magus immediately to suggest some candidates that we can use. So great, and we now have a design candidate, and we're ready to go forward, but then we run into a problem. It is decided that we need so-called pro version of our product with a larger battery. And now the antennas and the placement, the original design along as um, work with the new design since the new larger battery is in the way. Okay, so what to do next? What we need to do is to make a new model variant and to show the whole process here with the help of video. Uh, with about one and a half minutes. I would like to show the connection to the 3 experience platform that the capabilities has to offer in the connection to CST Studio simulation. First, we can create a new model variant with NVIDIA project management tools and change the battery there to a larger one. After that, we can cut the assembly design as shown here, create a new CAD model for the music player, now including a larger battery. And then for finding and verifying new antenna locations, we can open a new CST Studio Suite model search for the updated CAT model saved on the 3D Experience platform and import it. Or alternatively, we could also do it directly in the platform, open this, open the system to do it from there with the updated design. Once we have the updated music player model, we can import the required antennas, uh, position them in suitable locations in um, where the newer, larger battery doesn't affect them, and run again our normal and then the simulations and verify that the results still agree with the requirements uh, for the product. And if all is well and we do not need to try other antenna positions or make further design changes, uh, we can then upload the final results on the 3D experience platform. Here we are making the final simulation product. Um, a project for the new antenna design, checking the results. And everything is, seems to be fine, so we can now save the model to the 3 experience platform. And then, again, there some other colleagues could download these results and integrate them for the design and integrate them for his own design, so he's integrate his own design changes for his part of the project. Or the team leader could download the model, double check and verify the results and so on. So all in all, the integration to the 3D Experience platform allows us to leverage a multitude of tools and also enables us um, that they communicate and collaborate with other platform users and our colleagues. On the other hand, maybe you're an antenna or component supplier working for a large OEM and you're supplying the antenna design for the music player. Then for system integration purposes, the OEM might require the antenna model so that they include that in the system simulation for validation and certification purposes. But how do you make sure that no intellectual property of your company ends up in the wrong hands? We now have a solution to that as well. Encrypted models that hide the geometry, materials, ports, parameters, link the recipient of the encrypted model with a black box that they can include in the system and simulate to see the results, but without seeing inside the black box. So what they get is indeed what they see, if you compare here in the screenshot we have in the, on the top the original antenna design model and then we have encrypted that and given it to a different supplier who has included that in his own system design. And what he sees is indeed just a 
box, actually not in fact black, but in orange in this case, uh, but which can be used to run ACST Studio simulation and user will see the field results, for example, outside this box, uh, but all the results inside the box is hidden, so all the details, the uh, intellectual property details are hidden as well. This uh, feature is available for our time domain solver, which is indicated by the red T icon on the top uh, right-hand corner. And we'll have used these icons, solver icons, uh, to indicate a little bit on, throughout the presentation which uh, uh, solver is, this feature is applicable. So we have multiple, multitude of different solver technologies available for your use. And very roughly speaking, different solver technologies are suited to different size problems and different types of applications in terms of theoretical size, for example, of the simulation domain. So we have to consider also in addition to the antenna, also the environment where the antenna has to be installed. And for high-tech devices and components of small antenna simulations, where the simulation domain is typically nearly size, just a few wavelengths perhaps, the frequency domain solver shown the, in this chart with the green F icon is often a good choice. So, frequency domain solver is a, uh, an imported solver component simulation. It offers a push button solution for simulations with automatic meshing and mesh adaptation capabilities with higher order elements and code mesh. And it combines also very strong solver technologies, including model order reduction techniques. It has the unique advantage of being able to also use moving mesh feature. I will talk a little bit about it in the next slide. And, and of course, there's been a lot of work in improving the frequency domain solver. Just to mention a couple of those, we have an automatic mesh edge refinement feature and simultaneous excitation, which is important, for example, for antenna array simulations. But now I would like to again mention this key and a very unique feature for the frequency domain solver, um, which is especially important for highly resonant components, such as small antennas or, or filters, the moving mesh. So it helps to reduce or eliminate so-called mesh noise problem uh, that is often plaguing these type of simulations with optimization or with tetrahedral meshes. So it's not a new feature, but um, it's an important one. That is unique to CST Studio and we have been fine-tuning it also for this release. But what it does, it is that instead of regenerating the mesh each time there is small geometry change, for example, during optimization process or parameter sweep, Instead of regenerating the mesh, we can move the mesh nodes from the original mesh slightly to accommodate that change if the change is small enough. So that means that we save some simulation time uh, because we no longer have to remesh, but we also eliminate so-called numerical noise um, introduced by regenerating the mesh for each step because then the meshes are not quite the same. But if we move a mesh, we basically keep the mesh same, just stretch it or squeeze it slightly, so we still keep the same mesh, so we have much less numerical noise due to different meshes between different simulation steps. Another important mesh-related feature is the automatic metallic edge refinement. And why is it important? We usually have high field concentrations or singularities at metallic edges. So to be able to really have an accurate solution, we need to be able to also mesh um, accurately in such places. We do have an automated mesh refinement feature, which also does refine the mesh. But with this new feature, we can already manually tell the mesh engine to refine the mesh on such uh, edges, either globally or locally, which allows us to fine tune the mesh even before we start simulation to have a better uh, starting point. And this also, of course, saves simulation time, since now with the automatic mesh refinement, there's less work to do because we've already given it a hint that I, here we, we know that already we need a uh, finer mesh. And it also improves accuracy is having an, a sufficient fine mesh at such metal edges is critical for accurate simulation results. So you don't have to mark all the edges, you can just tell the mesh head to use this feature and automatically detect these kind of metal edges or selected, unselected pieces or parts. So it's very easy and automatic to use. And it is especially important for very strong resonant field uh, structures such as filters 
which are of course important for any device with communication capabilities as well. And we have tools for field design and analysis. The first, of, first, first of which I would like to mention is the field designer 2D, which, as the name says, is more for 2D planar filters, which might often be found in high-tech devices. For 2019, there has been quite a bit of work in improving the accuracy of the synthesization of the GCP models for the 2D filter designer 2D. So when compared now with the full 3D M results, the agreement result is really excellent, as can be seen in this, in this example. This makes the design of such planar fields faster and easier than before, since even less optimization work has to be is required to make the synthesized model to work, and then further taken the design to the 3D side or 3D model. And there are also some other new features which are listed here below, although I won't now go through all of that in detail, but if you're interested in hearing more, please don't hesitate to contact us. Although cavity filters are not usually found in high-tech devices, I will anyway be able to mention them here, um, since I'm talking about filters. So filter design here 3D, our tool for 3D or cavity filter design, also gains some nice new features for 2019, the first of which is the VNA-based filter tuning. Meaning you can use the filter design here 3D live to tune your actual filter. As shown in the picture here on the desk, you have the actual filters with all these tuning screws. And you can use that device physically with the combination of the filter designer 3D to actually see real real-time real response and how the filter designer 3D then suggests to change and optimize the filter. So this feature is available to all users with a valid filter designer 3D license and supports various VNA instruments from both Roland Schwarz and copper mounting technologies at the moment. Filter Designer 3D also has quite a lot of other new features, a few of which are listed on this slide, and again, I don't want to go into too much detail about them right beyond uh, mentioning that uh, these are available, and if you're interested in hearing more about such features, please stay tuned for further webinars on the subject, or as always, don't hesitate to contact us directly. A feature that we had last year already for freeze domain and time domains always uh, was to being able to use pi circuits for lumped element definitions in 3D models is now extended to include touchstone circuits. What this means is that we can include directly in the 3D simulation a circuit component, either spice or touchstone, without having to run a 3D circuit core simulation. Well, the main advantage is that you get more accurate circuit presentation for your lumped elements without leaving the 3D modeling side, so no circuit topology information is lost. You can directly replace the actual components physically where they need to be. And you also get more accurate results from the 3D simulation as real element behavior can be directly simulated in 3D. And also mesh adaptation benefits from this as then we get more accurate results in 3D. We can also refine the mesh more accurately around the uh, lumped elements. Another advantage is that since it's no longer necessary to define a port and you see the designs to do your circuit simulation for core simulation to calculate the correct fields with the, with the actual lumped element values, uh, you, with less ports you need less time to simulate in 3D, so the simulation time is also shorter. When we talk about high-tech devices, especially devices with communication capabilities and antennas, one important aspect is making sure that the device passes the certification test required by the legal standards, for example, the specific absorption rate, or SAR, human body exposure to RF electromagnetic fields. And to avoid costly failures, manufacturers, of course, want to verify with simulation that the devices will pass such required tests before going to them, actually. That means that accurate human body models are critical. And for 2019, we also have a test measurable human model that can be used for our, our free domain solar. So this allows you, our customers, our users, more choices regarding the available solvers that are available for such human exposure simulations. We also have other voxel-based uh, human body models a large library of them, in fact, 
And the voxel-based models are well suited to our time domain solver with hexagonal meshes. And this year we have integrated our new Shima model, model parser tool in CST Studio Suite. The parser tool allows you to indirectly parse selected voxel models for various scenarios instead of just using the static models. This of course allows much more flexibility for you to check that your device works in, the, in different environments and uh, in different body positions and um, when, when you're holding the device in different situations, in different poses. And that uh, allows you to test these different scenarios using platforms and risk to humans. For example, a driver or passenger in a car above a wireless charging pad for electric vehicles. And mentioning vehicles allows me to smoothly switch to our next injury process experience, connected vehicle communication performance. And in this, in this industry process as well, we are also trying to answer three very similar questions as for the high-tech integrated antenna engineering certification. How should the antenna look like? Where can I place the antenna? And will it still work correctly when placed on the vehicle? And here's the reason, especially why these, these questions are important for, for this type of applications for automotive. The antennas for this type of automotive applications are usually designed in isolation, since that is easier an easier design optimization problem. The antenna performance, the antenna far field, so the measure of how well the antenna radiates in different directions, for example, GPS antenna should point up up the sky and so on, is however very different when the antenna is placed on the car. And inside the car there are also other antennas, other radio systems which may degrade or interfere with the antenna or radio performance. Cars are typically quite a bit larger than small portable devices, so they also have different requirements for solver technologies. Our time domain solver and also integral equation solver, uh, shown here in this chart with this blue I icon and red T icon, they are ideally suited or well suited to these kind of larger simulations when the environment size grows from a few wavelengths to dozens of wavelengths. We will talk more about the I solver later, but I would like to mention one a new improvement that is very much related to automotive communications, which is the windscreen antenna modeling. The windscreen antenna modeling has been improved quite a bit this year, making the whole process of, of this kind of simulation uh, much easier and, and shorter for the user. And this new this is basically a modeling feature. And with this kind of better modeling features and better uh, modeling also leads to better mesh quality, which also further enhances the solver performance and accuracy of these kind of simulations. So these improvements in this modeling uh, workflow do actually have quite far-reaching consequences, positive consequences, I would I should say, for the whole windscreen antenna simulation. Let's go back to the time domain solver because this is what I would like to talk about more uh, next. So. Time domain solver is a powerful solution for many different applications for multiple different reasons, and but it's especially popular for antenna simulations, especially we include a, a platform around the antenna. The advantages, the advantages are of the time domain solver are that it is very robust but also very accurate meshing with our perfect boundary approximation or PBA technique. So we can mesh very complex CAD models with ease. It is also very fast and efficient. We can typically run very large simulations with quite limited hardware. But if we use, for example, more hardware resources such as GPU computing, we can run quite, run quite massive simulation in a very short time. And we can also combine solver technologies with each other with our hybrid solutions, but I will also talk more about those in a moment. One of the key new features for the 2019 release, especially for this transportation mobility industry, is the possibility to import surface meshes in Nastran and also in NVH uh, formats with connectivity information. This is also an important feature for the integral equation asymptotic solvers. Um, CAT models for cars are typically quite complex, and for simulation purposes, the manufacturers often prepare a reduced 
model, a RDB simulated surface mesh model. For electronic simulations, we also need the connective invasion between the body panels, so being able to spot and read the information on NVH um, meshes or form formats can be quite crucial to get correct and accurate results. And even though we time the mesh solver, we can typically mesh even the complicated CAT models quite efficiently. Being able to use these ready-made models that the manufacturers like to use is quite important and also somewhat easier in some sense uh, for, for the simulation purposes. One of the key features that many of you, our customers, use in combination with our time demand solver is GPU computing. We currently support NVIDIA Tesla and selected NVIDIA Quattro series cards for accelerating simulations with GPU computing. And for this year, we have, of course, extended GPU computing support to the latest Pascal and um, all the series uh, NVIDIA GPUs, um, such as Tesla B100 and Quattro GB100. Why is GPU computing so important and, and so popular option for accelerating simulations? Well, to put it simply, it is relatively cheap and it is very, very fast. Here is a comparison chart for a few different models and solar technologies which support GP computing, comparing simulation speed up of the GP computing simulation to a fast Intel Xeon based dual CPU workstation simulation. So this shows how much faster a simulation with a GPU is when compared to CPU only simulation. As you can see from the blue bars on the um, on the right hand side. Uh, we can get approximately 6 to 10 times faster simulation times when using a single Tesla V100 GPU card. And that is a massive difference in simulation efficiency and simulation speed. For example, going from being able to run a one eight-hour simulation during a single workday to being able to run up to 10 simulations during a workday. So that kind of a speed up is really nothing to be snipped at. Going from antennas to sensors, but still staying in the automotive area, let's next talk about, about automatic driving assistance and autonomous vehicle sensors performance. For electronic simulations, these types of sensors mostly mean radar-based sensors, again meaning that we are dealing in some sense with antenna simulations, although for our for now framed in different contexts, we need to be even more aware of the surroundings and the environment where the sensor needs to operate. The environment is typically bigger, meaning the electrical size also grows, and so do our requirements for the solar technology. The problem is, however, that we have sort of a dual problem. We need to model and simulate the sensor on the car and make sure it works on the car with other systems, but we also need to be able to simulate the environment where the car and sensor operate. These two scenarios are better suited to different solar technologies, so which solar technology do we use? The answer to that is that we use both, or several even, with our hybrid solver. Our hybrid solver allows us to combine different solar technologies in a single simulation. So we can divide the simulation into different areas or volumes and run each side, each volume, the best solver for that particular smaller problem. So what this bidirectional uh, what the hybrid solver does is to create a bidirectional link between solvers, allowing it either to run these solvers both on the different domains in the whole simulation volume until a convergence is reached. So for this year, we have extended availability of the hybrid solver technology to all our high frequency solver: the frequency domain, the time domain, time domain, the integral equation, and the asymptotic solvers. This means that we can now use the best technology or combination of technologies that a particular problem requires. For example, we need to integrate antenna array in the front of the car and on the bumper. The array is integrated on a steel support and we also need to consider the presence of the plastic parts around it. And starting from just estimating the wavelength of interest, we can derive the electrical size of our calculation domain. And the problem is actually quite large. Uh, since the simulation volume is also quite big, so that is already our first challenge. But if you look at the antenna array, it also needs a fairly fine mesh because the elements are very small. 
And to be able to get accurate enough results with all the fine details in it, we also need to mesh it quite finely. So the array itself, we could choose, for example, fixed domain solver, and then combine that with integral equation solver for the full car simulation or the car environment simulation and to see how the antenna array and then radiates towards the front of the car to answer the question basically, does the sensor see the object in front of the car? Talking about antenna arrays, our antenna array task is exactly the right tool for designing and simulating antenna arrays. You can start from a single antenna element simulation, then define a antenna array size, shape, excitations and other characteristics, and then move on to array design and simulations based on that single element. And finally, once the design is ready, to go to a full array simulation and verification stage. We also have some new feature for antenna arrays in this release, and most important of those have to do with parametrization. You can, for example, use the parametrized antenna information combined with any antenna element simulation to calculate so-called array pattern without having to simulate a full array. And if the array excitations are defined in a parametric fashion, you can sweep those excitation parameters in post-processing. In a parameter sweep, meaning you can change those parameters to check how the array scans in different directions without having to run any further 3D simulations. Very closely related to antenna array simulations, Freak the domain solver and integral equation solver also get a new feature for simultaneous excitation. Antenna arrays may have dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of individual elements, each of which needs to be excited to get the correct array pattern. And for such large arrays, it is not practical to simulate all those excitations individually, but instead it's much more efficient to define as a simultaneous excitation, meaning simulating all uh, excitations on in one go, each with their own phasing and amplitude information, meaning we get the full array pattern in a single simulation. That is useful for example checking and then array behavior in different scan angles, but also can speed up any kind of multiple simulations, not, not even talking about arrays, but any kind of multiple simulations to speed up the simulation time. Last but not least on our industry process list is aerospace and defense aircraft communication and detection system performance. And Again, we are stepping up in the aircraft size of the simulation, both to the increased absolute size of the platform or the aircraft compared to cars, for example, but also to the increase in frequencies. For these type of simulations, the integral equation and asymptotic solvers are typically good choices. Integral equation solver also gets new few new nice features for the 2019 release. I already mentioned previously the time dimensions of the NVH mesh with connection information, surface mesh and field source intersection, simultaneous excitation, which I just mentioned, and also previously mentioned improved wind screen antenna simulation set up for these kind of automotive applications. Again, in this industry process, we are trying to answer three questions. How should the antenna look like? Where can I place it? And does it still work in the environment it is placed in? And now I would like to especially concentrate on the last questions, uh, questions for aircraft technique that can be quite crucial. As I mentioned earlier, the possibility to import NASA and MVH meshes and also possible to have intersection imported meshes and field sources is a critical feature for any kind of antenna placement application and for our hybrid solver technologies which are the last typically the best solver for each part of the simulation. And this makes it much easier to split the simulation in different areas. You can prepare a mesh for the aircraft on the 3D experience platform, import it, simulate the antenna separately and place it on the mesh body of the aircraft meaning with the field source, uh, place the, um, replace the antenna on the aircraft, so you can really get the most benefit of our different solver technology solver portfolio. So we can quickly, quickly get an accurate simulation result for the full problem using the best available combination of solver technologies. But 
after having simulated all these different antennas on the aircraft, we still need to make sure that these uh, they work as intended. And especially in aircrafts, the environment with antennas and especially radios uh, which are connected to these antennas have, where they have to operate is very complex. Modern aircrafts have multiple different radio an antennas and um, antennas and radio systems on them. Some of them are working at quite high power levels. And that increases the risk of interference between the radio systems. And as you can imagine, for somebody flying high above the ground, it's not exactly comforting experience if one of these systems doesn't work or suddenly stops working. Interference task is a tool for simulation of RF interference, basically allowing to check if your system has problems with interference or if something might not work when the aircraft is flying high above the ground. For this year, we have worked a lot on it to improve the user experience of the tool. So the most important new features are related to ease of use, improved usability. For example, we have now the interference task has the possibility to display a high-level overview of the interference um, events in the so-called violation matrix. But it also has detailed results for each radio system defined and now you have the direct and interactive link from this matrix results to the detailed results just by clicking on the corresponding entry in the matrix so you can much more quickly see exactly the detailed results based on each entry in the matrix but you can also use the violation matrix itself to drill down deeper into the result with sub matrices you can go for example high level radio system results deep down in the radio channel specific results really analyze which radio channels work and which have potential problems and also directly from there go to the deeper um, exact um, or um, detailed results to the plots by clicking then on the actual corresponding entry in the matrix and finally you can also have a list view of the validation matrix results which also is a sorting of the result based on different criteria. So all in all, it's not possible for you to now much more quickly check exactly how the radio systems are working and where they where there are things that need to be fixed, or if there are any, any things that should be should be fixed. Talking about um, system simulation also allows me to introduce the new schematic editor which is quite a big feature, actually, to leave it almost in the end. But as you probably know, our system, a schematic editor, is not just a circuit simulation tool. It can be used to combine 3D simulations and circuits together to form a very complicated system and simulate them. And for this release, the schematic editor has been reworked completely and now has much better look and feel. Of course, the new look is the most obvious new feature, but the changes have allowed us to introduce some nice new usability features as well, and also will allow us further enhance the usability and add other functionality in the future, and maybe not all directly visible, but in the background as well. For example, so just listing a few of these new features that you have, you now don't need use connector, uh, function to create connections. You can simply select the node and direct the connection to another node or net and the connection automatically created. There is also now some new, a new auto connection mode which allows you to automatically connect matching components or blocks together. You can also select nets uh, to more easily manipulate them. And an important change is also that in the excitation settings for all different circuit simulation tasks, um, including, um, is that the example pod impedance settings are now in the task parameter list, so you can really have for each individual task individual settings to really be able to run multitude of simulations without having to change global settings. Each of the task now has individual settings for the excitations. Circuit simulation is used in several applications from microwave and radio frequency to EMC simulations and defining proper excitation load conditions for all these possible tasks is, is much easier now with these uh, individual settings for the impedance and load conditions. So you can easily see directly with an external port access the source of the load 
and which reverse impedance is used, which inner impedance even or load impedance. So part settings being task specific instead of just part specific allows each task have its own correct settings so it makes it much easier to set up complicated workflows with multiple tasks. To conclude, I would like to summarize the main features of the 2019 release. First, of course, is TSD Studio Suite um, 3D experience integration, allowing us to leverage the 3D experience platform features with CSD Studio Suite. Encrypted models for sharing models between, for example, suppliers and manufacturers without disclosing important intellectual property. It's a very new, a very new, a very important feature. Uh, imported Nastran and also NVH mesh um, uh, support, which is pretty critical for automotive applications. And finally, the hybrid solver, which now supports all our high frequency solvers, allowing us to really choose the best possible solver technology for each individual piece in the, in the full simulation. That is all I had to show you today. I hope you have enjoyed the webinar and I hope you have learned something useful. Thank you, Hilary, for your excellent presentation. Just before we begin the Q&A session, um, I'd like to make you aware that today's e-seminar has been recorded and everyone will receive a link to the replay. I would like to inform you that there is also the Simulia Learning Community accessible from SWIM platform where you can find past recordings of e-seminars and lots of technical blogs from staff and customers. If you'd like more information, we have a number of training classes which you can find on our website and you can follow us on social media at 3ds underscore Simulia in the platforms YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook. So I will end this webinar. I would like to thank you again, uh, Hilary, for your presentation. I would like You're to welcome. thank you all for joining. And we hope to see you at another seminar soon. Have a nice day and have a nice evening for the other. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.